Hello my soccer universe, the FCON in 22, it actually was to be played in 21, same as with the Euros, is history and it has, I would say, a worthy winner in Senegal in many ways, uh, although they have not been all that exciting uh, throughout the tour tournament, in fact I actually would say uh, up until the quarterfinals Senegal didn't really look like themselves, they just got through and uh, probably this is always the secret to winning a tournament. First, survive, 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 and then get hot. Not start out uh, blazing like these guys here in Nigeria, and then have one bad performance and you're out. So in that sense, yes, Senegal won. And I think we can all, all agree that Senegal in many ways was anyway the most talented team in the entire tour tournament, just from a squad perspective, uh, looking at that. Uh, it was also, you know, uh, on the day, Senegal also, I think, did deserve it. Uh, although at the end, I actually thought that Egypt might just nick it. Egypt taking the scenic route through the tournament. They loved the Afghan so much that they took almost the maximum time to be there. There's just, just one penalty sure, sure missing. But I think I cannot remember any team going through four overtimes to reach a final and then in the final. And yeah. In the end, I think it was too much and, it, and it, actually this exhaustion on the part of Egypt dictated uh, more or less how this game was to be played. But before we talk about the final, uh, we have to talk about the third place matchup where I only saw highlights because, you know, A, Derby, B, um, third place matches are always a little bit tedious, although they are goal filled and this one, especially when I saw them, how it actually worked out. It uh, reminded me a lot of the first time I saw Burkina Faso in at the home tournament in 98, where in the 86th minute, I think, they made it 4-1 and managed to 4-4 and lose on penalties. Uh, I think the goals were 88th, 89th and 90th for the DRC. Still one of the craziest finishes of a game I've ever seen because you really thought they had won. I was so happy for them and no. They only finish in fourth, but that actually uh, sealed the deal for me that I really love Burkina Faso in many ways. So, uh, and it was very, very similar here. Burkina Faso had um, a 2-0 uh, halftime lead, uh, Iago scoring the first one, and then horrible on goal by Onana in the 4th for the 3rd, and then Uatara in the 49th make it 3-0. And you think they are cruising, uh, more or less, and what, what is Cameron doing? Cameron, though, it has said they played with a second string lineup, so you know, it was not really expected that Cameron are uh, gonna win all that, uh, you know, will put in a great performance in, 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 in a way. It was anyway, you know, it's a game where you can try a few things. But Cam Cameron came broken in the 71st pulls from back and then I had actually quite a few chances until Abu Bakar with a brace in the 85th and 87th leveled the game. Long stoppage time but it goes straight to penalties and i think this is for a third place playoff the absolute right choice to go for uh straight for a penalty shoe shootout i i will not say it for uh, a real match i shouldn't call it a real match but you know what i mean uh but in this case i think it worked out, out, out fine and cameron actually hit all the penalties for once um whereas um traore missed the third one for burkina faso and so cameron finished in third place and I guess, yeah, host, blah, blah, blah. It's probably not a bad, bad thing that Cameron are finishing in third place. So all about the final. Uh, a lot of Tam Tam, of course, uh, ahead of the game with you know, all the uh, stages set and celebrations, blah, 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 blah. The final, of course, it was all about the two big Liverpool stars facing each other. And boy, did they face each other. Not, I mean, I, it, it was never contentious. However, uh, there were quite a few moments where uh, they were, let's say, in near proximity. And Senegal started out with a bang, uh, going on the offensive. They knew that Egypt must be gassed and earn a penalty or in the third minute. And then the first big scene of that um, uh, day is that Gabaski uh, gets some hints from uh, Mohamed Salah, who just, blah, 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 blah. he might not even have said much, maybe it's just to get into Sadio Mane's head, and Sadio Mane steps up and, and tells him, you, you go into goal. And at the moment, I, I, I was actually thinking, this might have put uh, Mane off, I mean, he looked super confident throughout the game, um, but you could see the penalty, maybe there was some nervousness, he just yanked it. 
And he wanted to go straight down, down, down the middle, but the trajectory took him a little bit to his left, the part where Gabaski likes to dive to. Of course, natural uh, shooter, and he can save it. Uh, at the moment, I thought that the rebound might go in, but no, it didn't, and uh, it stayed at nil-nil. Now, uh, in hindsight, I actually would have wished that this goal would, uh, that this penalty would have gone in, because I think we would have gotten a better game out, out, out of it. Senegal, I think for the first 20, 20 minutes, uh, were really, really prayer pressuring, and Egypt just tried to hold on. But then the game settled. And it became tedious, it became boring, because that's what exactly Egypt wanted to do. They wanted to slow the game down, they wanted, they wanted to see City, but actually, uh, I'm not saying they played for penalties, but it was more or less, you know, catch Senegal on a transition and hope that Mohamed Salah uh, produces some magic, which uh, he had, I think, a first shot around the 28th, and then a really big chance just before halftime, when he has the ball, and you see the defender going, uh, leaning, leaning to the right, and then exactly at that moment, Salah unleashes a shot uh, in the um, to the near corner, high up, but uh, Mendy can save it. Uh, that would, I think, this was Egypt's best chance in the game. Um, but yeah, I think the Kuyate had a long range shot that just curled, curled, curled up. But at that point, the game really, really slowed down. It was also not helped. And I already said, as a semi final, the pitch did not look good uh, at the Olympia Stadium. Second half, uh, pretty much the same, almost the same story. It's just was that the pressure period of Senegal was even shorter. I think the first 10 minutes, there were two or three chances for, for Senegal. And then the game slowed down. And then it was actually Egypt in the second half with a, a two, uh, I, I want to say near, near misses. It's, um, it was two headers, I think, by Hamdi, who had come, come, come on the 60th, um, who once he connected but couldn't get a much... Uh, direction on, on, on and then after another free kick he just missed it but that was at that point it actually seemed that uh, Egypt again had weathered the storm made it solid and were hoping that with a dead ball situation they can uh, win win the game and you know with a little bit of luck they actually could have done that um, for Senegal they actually were very um, how do I say, um, saving with their substitutions in many ways. Uh, but uh, Dieng coming on uh, in the 77th, he ac actually was in the linchpin in the uh, overtime, where the game almost, you you, you want to say, it was unavoidable that the game went there. Uh, but before we go to overtime, I also have to, have to say the referee, he, he didn't hesitate to give the decision for the penalty, but I have, have to say, his line was a little bit uneven. Uh, I don't want to say he was blatantly favoring Egypt, but I think the way he did not dish out yellow cards made it easier for Egypt to contain Senegal because Egypt was really, really physically and really, really rough. And I think a timely placed yellow card here and there could have actually um, helped the game a little bit as, as well. And then I actually thought at one point the Manet is actually in danger of getting a, a sanding off because, you know, he had a foul. And then th there were a few more where uh, a strict referee will, will, will have gotten a second yellow. But you think Manet has not done much, but the Egyptian guys were really pushing. So, yeah, I thought it was a kind of a so-and-so uh, refereeing performance. But back back to game, right of overtime. Uh, Dieng, I think in the first minute of overtime, is sent uh, long and uh, he takes a shot that is saved by Gabaski. I think he had then another chance um, and uh, in the second half of overtime he hit a long range shot that was also saved by Gabaski. I mean, this, 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 this was a swerving ball, it was not an easy save. Egypt themselves also had one chance, but I felt as soon as it went to second half of overtime with our, our other goal, Penalties are unavoidable, and that to me meant also uh, Egypt's win is, I don't want to say unavoidable, but, um, you know, it's not, um, it's not very, it's the best chance that Egypt has of winning this game in many, many ways. Um, and Egypt, you know, has to say where both the coaches have to uh, be up, had to be up in the stands because of red cards. Um, and, of course, with Gabaski only the second string goal, goalkeeper. 
who in many ways was the man of the tour tournament. I mean, the way he was saving the penalty shootouts uh, and also pull pulling of saves. Being injured, we again had the thing like from the quarterfinal onwards that around the 90 or, or just before halftime, he makes kind of a stretch save and suddenly he has to lie down to let his team a little bit recover and then really playing on. I think he was injured against Morocco. Uh, but in the other games, I think he used it a little bit to uh, let his team, you know, a little bit of dark arts, but I, I think it's okay in some ways. So penalties and... I might be wrong here, but I thought already against Cameroon, Egypt won the toss as far as I, I could uh, elected to go second. And here again, I felt they, they elected to go second. Um, be it as it may, what I found a little bit more astonishing is the choice of the penalty shooters. Both teams went with their superstars last. And I probably should have do a v, uh, VA video, but it's, you can show it mathematically rather easily. Um, that you just have put your best shooters first to get them to shoot because what happened already against Ca uh, Cameron albeit in the win the best shooter did not shoot and it happened again that Salah the best penalty taker for Egypt did not have the chance it's just for a shot of glory you go last but that's not the way you want it you want to have your best shooters first and then let the others do because uh, get all your shots in first get score Get the scores up. So that was a weird thing, but since both teams did it, so be it. Um, I have to say, Gabaski was there. I mean, he had, had his bottle with hints where uh, people taking the penalties, which I found a little bit curious because I don't remember Koulibaly, for instance, taking a penalty. Maybe in a penalty shoot shooter for Napoli, but he's not a regular penalty shootout, uh, shooter, a penalty taker, penalty shootout taker, penalty taker. So yeah. Um, so he stepped up, uh, converts the first one, then Zizo very uh, convincingly. Uh, Abdou Diallo again um, almost saved. I mean, uh, Senegal went really for uh, every shooter, went for the natural corner and made it precise. Because then the key keeper doesn't have a chance, but there were two where you thought... Mm -hmm. um, then Abdel Monem puts it on the post when... Um, Mandy was going the other corner. Mandy doing the arts of jumping, jumping, jumping. But as soon as the whistle goes, he stays put. If you're jumping, I actually uh, would at least move a little bit. And, you know, you might miss then the point of um, when the um, shot is taken. Um, so a slight advantage for Senegal. However, uh, Saar steps up and shoots a really bad penalty. Again, to his left, natural corner. Um, and it is safe. So all even and then Hamdi who had those two headers and I think he had had an even shot late in the um, overtime um, makes it 2-2 two, two. and at this moment you thought yeah okay this might be now the point where um, Egypt take over however then a very emphatic uh, penalty by Dieng who really wanted to get that winner and that I mean having such an emphatic penalty again to his left, but high up. I mean, he it hit the roof of the net. Uh, that actually sends a message. And uh, Lachine, span by value was also not uh, not very well placed and was an easy save for Mandy. And then Manet steps up, um, and you could see in his face. I mean, my wife told, told me he looks like he's gonna convert. He looks full of confidence. Yes, he did look full of confidence. He was full of confidence. Precise and with full power, even in uh, the replay. The, pe the the shot looks like a rocket. So yeah, Mane wins it. Salah cannot take his penalty. Um, and Senegal are winners. Of course, uh, wild celebrations. It was the first ever title for Senegal. Something that sem seemed like, at least in the, over the last 20 years, a little bit overdue, especially for the last five, because uh, together with Algeria, Senegal have definitely been the most talented team in all of Africa. But it took them a while, so it was high time. They were, again, I think they were the most talented team in the entire tournament. Uh, although you would have, you know, Algeria it was a big disappointment. But when I look at the squad, um, Senegal is probably even a tad above Algeria. And yeah, so I, I was actually happy that Senegal did win this one, uh, despite uh, them playing in those weird jerseys. Uh, side note, I then afterwards I looked whether they are available, blah, 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 blah. It was still available at XXL and as soon as I wanted to put uh, a name set on there just to see how much it would be. 
XXL was also sold because XXL I might have even gone for, but maybe not on that evening because I don't like to uh, buy a shirt just because a team just won. I usually give myself some time. At the moment on the Puma store, it's only XS and S and I have not seen those jerseys anywhere else. I would assume maybe they will, they will come at some point, but I never liked them anyway. So there we go. But I, I, I would like to have a green Senegal jersey, although I have many green African jerseys. Um, I did like that Asadio Mane, and uh, you know, we know that he is, he, he is a very gracious uh, guy. I mean, he went up to his teammate af afterwards and, you know, embraced him, consoled him. Salah was really, really uh, hurting in a way uh, and, you know, didn't want to hear much at that point. I think they embraced him when Salah went up to the podium uh, one more more time and I hope this doesn't um, have any effects on the tournament because it's always bad when you are two superstars. One is coming home very happy, the other one very, very sad. And, you know, it's the second final loss for Egypt. So I actually think that Egypt is a team that we may look forward to for the next two and two, 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 two tournament in a way. Uh, be it as it may, uh, I hate those ceremonies drawn out. I think after the the game is over, the only thing that's of interest is give the friggin' trophy to the team. Don't. I mean, at least at least this time, all the trophies went to a players that were kind of happy. Because Abu Bakr got the golden boot. Yeah, he was happy. Uh, Mendy got the best goalkeeper. I think that's a little bit of a tough task. Uh, Gabaski was given the, uh, the player of the game. And you can see, I mean, he has to take an interview. It doesn't really matter there. Um, I actually think that Gabaski for me was in many ways the play of the tournament. I can see why they, why they give it to Sadio Mane because, you know, he also, he did quite well. But, you know, uh, beat ass as it may. But it draws it all out and then to top it all off. All the Senegal players had their medals, were waiting for the trophy, were already jumping and dancing and so on. You know, I love these African moves and so on. I cannot pull them off in any way. Koulibaly wants to take the trophy and then Infantino tells me, you know, you have to go up to Paul Beer, the president. We have the trophy. We carry it up to him that he can give it to you. Please, Mr. President, can you get your lazy, you know what, down on the pitch or have this fucking ceremony? I'm cursing for the first time in a long time on my channel. Up there on the... Uh, next to the president. Don't do this double thing. And I think they got this idea from the uh, Copa del, del, del Rey where also the player has to go up now to the king, uh, the captain. But at least there it was uh, made, 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 made clear the trophy is only up there. It is just something... I, this takes everything out. And then Koulibaly comes down and maybe with his extra lap of honor. He took the time. And I was done very happy to see that um, with the coach, they looked at it first. I mean, the coach... I really like him. I really like, like him now. Of course, the name is not coming to me. Uh, but I really like, like him. And it's very good that an African coach uh, wins such a tournament. This doesn't happen very, very, very often. Senegal lifts the trophy. Celebrations and I think today in Dakar it's gonna get wild. Um, but that's only the prelude to the World Cup playoff where those two of course will meet again. In any case, um, no more parting thoughts now for me. I might do uh, a bit later uh, another montage video with a very quick uh, a recap of the tournament. But for now I want to leave it with Senegal cel celebrating. Um, Final, I think it was an okay final. Uh, I would have wished that the pitch was better and that uh, it, the opponents were, the one opponent was not as tired. I think that played definitely in it. But we got maybe always the beginning of each period, we got some good action at least from Senegal. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the final. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!